So this is the input section to the Audient ASP4816. Um, if we're recording, first thing we need to do is to select mic or line. And if the signal's coming from the live room, it'll be a mic input, so that button will need to be out. This here is our gain, input gain. So we'll need to adjust that accordingly. We're looking for the meter to peak no more than zero VU. Um, down here we have phantom power plus 48V. So if it's a condenser microphone, we can turn phantom power on and we can see that when we do that, we get a little spike metering. So we've always make sure that the channels cut uh, when turning on phantom power, turning on turning phantom power on and off. So make sure it's cut. Uh, so we don't damage our speakers here we have what we call a high pass filter or a bass roll off so if we want to get rid of any low frequency content then uh, we just uh, switch that in uh, that could be set at uh, either 80 100 or 120 hertz i'm not sure i haven't read the manual but that's usually where it's set and this is a phase switch to check um, phase so if we're using two microphones, such as uh, two overhead microphones, we need to check the phase. So we can use that there. Now this button here, um, this will show us uh, if a signal is coming in from the live room. So assuming that we've connected the microphone correctly and the cable's working and the mic's working and we've plugged it into the wall box and we've put phantom power in, if we need it on a condenser signal, uh, then we should get something metering here. Uh, but this two segment, three segment meter doesn't really tell us very much about the level, the amount of level that we're getting. So if we press this MTR switch here, that flips that mic line signal onto this 20 segment meter and we can then adjust our gain accordingly. So let's go through that again. Mic line, gain, phantom power, filter phase so this is the long fader this is what's called our monitor path or tape return path so this doesn't adjust the recording level unlike this one which adjusts the recording level this only adjusts the level or the volume if you like in our speakers in the studio that's all that does and uh, we use this to get ourselves a nice monitor mix so it's this fader that needs to be in the mix we can pan left and right we can solo and we can cut and of course when we solo and cut here uh, we cut we solo or cut the sound in the speakers we don't um, cut the record level so this should say DAW let's pan in we put it in the mix we bring the fader up and usually to about zero DB to start with and we start hearing the sound in the monitors this is the master section and on here we have our master fader, master left right fader. So that would need to be up. We have our uh, monitor, main monitor volume, it's right in the center of the console. So we need to turn that up to here, signal coming through. If there's any problems, if we, if we see a signal meeting, metering here, but not here, then that could be for a number of reasons. But if we see a signal metering here and we bring this fader up and the monitor button up, monitor uh, pot up, then we should actually hear a level. So we can cut our monitors, um, we can um, drop the level as well if we wanted to talk without adjusting the level here. We can dim the level, I think, by 15 dB. Over here, just above the master left right fader, we see we've got our talk back section. section and this here FB is foldback and uh, is the foldback volume. Foldback means that your voice is routed down that microphone and through to the headphones. So that's foldback. Um, that's for a studio loudspeaker. And that's to record your voice onto the uh, recording slate. But that's the one that gets used the most. So to set up headphones, we have our auxiliary section here and just here we have something called QA and QB. So if we uh, want to send out um, a foldback mix back into the studio so the musicians can hear what they're playing, 
we need to turn up these accordingly. I put these in pre-fade, which is this button here. And what that means is that the mix then is independent of these faders. So it doesn't matter what I do to these faders. It doesn't make any difference to the signal being sent into the studio because it's pre-fade signals taken before the fader. And that's usually how we set up headphones. We have them as pre-fade. So I turn these up. So just to go over that again, so QA, QB, or auxiliary sends used for headphones. We put them into pre-fade here. We make sure that the auxiliary masters are up. QA, QB, 